Good morning everybody and welcome to another day of GSC at home. You're here with me, my name is Jennifer and today we are going to have a look at some things that take a journey through our bodies. So I'm going to be asking you lots of questions today, so feel free to pause the video, have a little think and then come back to me with your answers. So that's my first question for you. What kinds of things take a journey through your body? Well we've thought of three main things. Firstly, we have food and drink, lots of tasty, yummy food that we take in all the time. Secondly, we've got oxygen, oxygen in the air around us. And lastly, our blood. Our blood is moving around inside our bodies all the time. And its job is to help get that oxygen that we get from the air around us all the way around our bodies to all of the different places it needs to go. But we're going to focus today on our food and drink because that's my favourite one. So the process of putting food and drink into our bodies and the way it moves through our body is called digestion. Have you heard that word before? It's a bit of a strange one. It sounds a little bit like the biscuit. But for today, we're going to be talking about digestion and following the food through that process. So we take food into our bodies for one very important reason. It gives us energy. And if we take in lots of different types of food, it gives us vitamins and nutrients that help us to grow big and strong. So let's have a think. Where does that process start? Well, I have here a nice bowl of fruit. So if I was to put that into my body and start that digestion process, where would I put it? Would I put it into my ears? No, that doesn't seem right. What about up my nose? No, that doesn't seem right either. Maybe I could just open my stomach, post it straight in and get it into my body that way. No, that doesn't sound right, does it? Where does it go? Of course, it goes into our mouths. And that's because we have three very important tools in our mouth that help when we are breaking down food. Can you think of all three? So let's start with the really obvious one. These things right here are teeth. Our teeth help us to chomp and break down that food. We also have a tongue, which helps to move that food to all of the teeth around our mouth and helps to break it down. But we've also got that kind of watery stuff that's in there. That's called saliva. And saliva actually helps to break down our food even more and make it into a big sticky ball so it's ready to go on the next part of its journey. But our teeth are the really important ones. Now I want you to use your tongue and feel, feel all of your teeth. Are they all the same shape? No, they're not. And that's because they have very important jobs to do. So these ones at the front, these big flat ones, right here, those are called our incisors. Now incisors sounds a little bit like the word scissors and that's a good way to remember it because that's what they do. They snippety snip. They snip our food into lots of tiny little pieces. Now next to those are our pointy teeth. Some people call them our fangs, maybe our vampire teeth, but these are called our canines. Now your canines have a different job. What they do is they grip and rip your food into lots of little pieces. Now if you head all the way back, all the way back to these teeth back here, you will find some big flat teeth and those are called your molars. Now your molars are your plant eating teeth. Those ones crush and grind your food into even smaller pieces so that it's ready for the next part of your journey. But what do we do with it then? We don't just hold our food in our cheeks like hamsters. So where does it go? That's right, we swallow our food and it goes into our throat down a very special tube called our esophagus. Now don't worry, that sounds like a really really scary word, but all it is, is a squeezy food tube. It sounds a little bit like the word sausages as well, which makes me laugh. So to show you how it works, I have a piece of 
fabric, it's kind of like a tube, it's like a big sock that's open at both ends. And I want you to imagine that this ball is the food that we've just chopped up and it's in a big sticky ball. Now when we swallow it, <clears throat> it goes into our esophagus like this and our esophagus is covered in muscles and those muscles squeeze and they move that food all the way down to the bottom until it gets to the very bottom and goes on to the next place. Now this is actually a really useful process. It means that we can eat in a huge variety of places. Even astronauts can eat in space. Those muscles help the food can move down the esophagus instead of just floating around inside their bodies. So now that it's gone into our mouths, been chomped up, it's gone down our esophagus, where does it end up? That's right, it ends up in our stomachs or our tummies. Now, can you point on your body and show me where you think your stomach is? Where do you think? A lot of people point a lot further down, roughly where their belly button is, because that's where all the rumbling and the grumbling comes from. But your stomach's actually a bit further up and a bit further over than a lot of people think it is. So I like to use an experiment and pretend I'm a teapot. It sounds crazy, but trust me. So if you stand and you put your hand on your side, like you're a teapot, where your hand ends up, right over here on the left hand side of your body, a little bit further up and a little bit further over than we first thought, that is where our stomach is. Crazy, isn't it? Now, how big do you think your stomach is? Show me with your hands, what do you think? This big, this big. I can eat quite a lot, so maybe it's this big. Well, actually, when it's empty, your stomach is the size of your fist. I know. Now your stomach's also covered in muscles, which means that it can do one very important thing. How on earth does it fit all of that food inside that tiny little space? Well, it's a little bit like a balloon. Those muscles help it to stretch and fit all of that food inside. Now don't worry, it's not like a balloon, it won't burst, but when it stretched as much as it can, it sends a signal up to your brain to tell you that you're full and that we should probably stop eating now. So instead of just talking about stomachs, I thought that I could show you what a stomach does. It sounds a bit more exciting, doesn't it? Okay, you ready? Follow me to the kitchen. So here we are in my kitchen and I said that I was going to show you what your stomach can do and we're going to do that. I'm going to give you a little tour of what my stomach did yesterday. So for that, we need a stomach. You ready to see my stomach? Ta-da! Okay, yeah, it is just a plastic bag, but we are going to pretend that this is our stomach for today. And I'm going to show you all of the food that went into my stomach yesterday. You ready? Let's go. So, woke up first thing in the morning and what's the first meal that you have? Yeah, that's right, it's breakfast. So for breakfast, I had some cereal. I had some lovely, tasty cereal. I'm going to crunch that up Ooh, into our stomach. I'm getting it everywhere, I'm such a messy eater. Okay, but do you have your cereal dry just like that? No, what do you have it with? Yeah, that's right, you have it with milk. So I've got some milk here that we're gonna pour into my stomach. There we go. And here we have it, my lovely tasty breakfast inside my stomach. So then I start doing work, I start moving around, I'm going up and down some stairs today. And then got to the middle of the day and I'm hungry again. What kind of meal do you have in the middle of the day? Yeah, you have your lunch. Now you might have sandwiches, you might have some soup, which is what I had. So I've got my bowl of soup over here. Now this soup is amazing. It's got lots of vegetables in it with lots of those vitamins and minerals that we spoke about earlier on. So it's going to keep me going for a lot of today. 
loads of that in there. And I was a little bit thirsty as well. So I've got some black currant juice here. I'm putting a little bit of that in as well. All right. Now you can see that's quite a lot of food in my stomach now, isn't it? It doesn't look very good at all. But what your stomach is starting to do, as soon as you put food into it, it starts to move. It's covered in those muscles that we spoke about and those start to move and churn up your food. Now it doesn't look a lot like the food that I put in, does it? No, but we're not finished yet. So after I've done the rest of my day, I sit down and it is dinner time. Now, I wasn't very good. I didn't do any shopping yesterday, but I did have one of my favorite things in the world, mashed potato. So I'm gonna put loads of that in there. So lots of mashed potato. Blah, straight into my stomach. Lots of it, I really like it. <laughs> but mashed potato can be quite boring on its own. So we're gonna mix it up with some sauces. Now some people might like tomato sauce, some people might like brown sauce. I like to mix the two together. Mix a bit of that in there like that. Good. Like that. Ugh. And a little bit more juice as well. It's important that we stay hydrated throughout the day. And then maybe a little drink of milk before bed. There we go. And that is it. And then once I've finished dinner, I can go to bed. But do you think when I go to bed, that my stomach goes to sleep too? No, it doesn't. It keeps moving all the time. Those muscles that we spoke about keep squidging that food and mushing it all together. Ugh so that it's ready for the next part of its journey. Now the food that we've got in here, ugh, it doesn't look anything like what we put in, does it? No. This is now ready to go on to the next part of its journey. But after your stomach, where does your food go? That's right, it goes to your intestines. Now your intestines sit right down where your belly button is, where some people might have thought that their stomach was before. And your intestines have a very important job. What they do is they take all of these lovely nutrients and vitamins and the water out of all the food that we eat and transport it to other parts of your body that can use it. It works a little bit like one of these. A sieve, has anyone ever used a sieve before? Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you that. So I've got a bowl. Yeah, you can see where this is going, can't you? I've got my sieve and we've got our stomach. So I'm gonna take my stomach and I'm gonna pour it into our intestines. Oh, yuck. There we go. Now you can see pretty much straight away all the water that's coming out of there. I'm going to speed up the process by giving it a little stir around. All of those vitamins and minerals in our food would be transported all the way around our body and would be used to give us energy. So we're going to leave this to do its thing and we're going to have a little think about our intestines. Now I've said they've got a really important job, but how big do you think your intestines are? I mean, they've got to fit inside your body, right? So you can't be too big. Well, your intestines might be a bit bigger than you thought. We're going to do a little experiment right now and show you just how big they are. Okay, so I've come out to the garden because I don't think I'm going to have enough room inside. But here I've got some ribbon and this is the length of our intestines. So I'm going to stretch it out and see how far up my garden I can get. But 
It's got some little black lines on it and each of these represent one meter. I want you to count them with me as we go. Okay, you ready? Let's go. So start here. Oh, there's one right there. Okay, you've got two. Okay, keep them going. We've got three meters and there's still loads left. Let's keep going. We've got four, there's four meters. Okay. Five, five whole meters and we're still going. Six meters. Seven meters. And another little bit, that's seven and a half meters of intestine. That gets me all the way out here. But how does that fit inside our bodies? Well, if I gather it all back up and jumble it up so it looks like a big plate of spaghetti. And that is how all of that seven and a half meters manages to fit inside our bodies. It's really cool, isn't it? I bet that's longer than you thought. So let's go back inside and check and see how our stomach contents are doing in our sieve. So now that we've let our stomach contents sit for a little bit, let's have a little look at them and see what's happened to the food as it goes through our intestines. Oh, here we go. Ugh. So you can see, if I hold it up, there's much more in that bowl than there was before. All of those vitamins and nutrients and the water will come out of our food and be transported to all of the places that they need. But what's left over in our sieve, yuck, that is our waste product. The stuff that our body can't use and doesn't need. I've called it a waste product, but you might know it by another name. I'll give you a little clue. Starts with P and it ends in OO. <laughs> yeah, that's it, is your poo. Your poo is your body's waste product. All of that stuff your body can't use there's no need to hang on to it. So we go to the bathroom and we get rid of it. And it's actually really important that we do because if we hold on to it, then it might make us unwell. So that's it, that's our digestive process. We followed it all the way from the top with our teeth, our tongue and our saliva, chomping all of that food up and getting it ready to go down our esophagus and land in our stomach where the muscles and the acids start to move it around and get it ready for the next part of its journey, which is our intestines. Your intestines take that food on that seven and a half meter journey, getting all of the goodness out of your food to help give us energy. And then our waste product, the stuff that we don't use, we get rid of. So that's it. We have followed the digestive journey all the way from the top to, well, quite literally, the bottom. <laughs> so thank you for joining us on another day of GSC at home. If you make your own stomach bags, let us know and let us know what you use to make them as well. But all this talk about food has made me super hungry, so I'm gonna head off and find some tasty food. But enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for joining us on GSC at home. Where did I put that fruit?